People each to deal with a variety of emotions, sadness, frustration, to procrastinate, loneliness, overwhelm, tiredness for women, PMS, and even positive emotions like when they're happy or to reward themselves. And I want to begin by saying that eating emotionally is not always a bad thing. In most cultures throughout history, eating food to celebrate significant life events is a positive experience. It often is used for communities to come together and form bonds and memories. Also, if you're using food as one of many tools to minimize unpleasant feelings now and then, it's not the end of the world. Emotional eating becomes a problem when you're doing it so much that it's negatively affecting your weight and your health. And it's a very common issue that I regularly help my clients to overcome. And I also wanted to say that if you've identified yourself as an emotional eater, that it's totally understandable. That we've been conditioned as a society to use food as a means of soothing ourselves. If we think about growing up, food is often used by well-meaning adults to stop us from feeling upset. You fall over and hurt your knee and you're crying and the caring adults don't want you to be upset and so they use food to help you feel better. And so mum says, here's an ice cream. So you go to the doctors and get a needle and you're given a chocolate or a jelly bean. So it's teaching you, training you, that if you're upset, all you need to do to feel better is to eat food. When you're wanting to emotionally eat, you want to slow down your automatic response. And the first thing you can do is to name the emotion. What am I feeling right now? Take a few deep breaths and identify what is the emotion that I'm feeling. Because awareness is our first step here. Because often we're so busy with life, rushing here and there, trying to get things done. I'm a busy mum of three and life gets just so crazy trying to keep up with everyone's schedules. Piano lessons, gymnastics, making lunches, helping with homework, and just making sure that everyone has something clean to wear and that there's food in the house. Because we're so busy and tend to be rushing around, then when we experience an unwanted emotion, then we want to just rush right in and getting rid of the unwanted emotion as fast as possible and head straight to the fridge or the cupboard. So take those few moments to breathe, Bring your focus back to yourself and your body and ask yourself the question, what is the emotion that I'm feeling? And after you've identified the emotion, the next question to ask is, what do I need right now? So if I'm feeling sad, do I need food or do I need to cry? If I'm feeling overwhelmed, do I really need food? Or do I need to chunk down my tasks and just focus on what needs doing next? If I choose to eat the food, how is that going to affect me emotionally? For some of my clients, eating the food brings them a small, temporary moment of pleasure, but then afterwards it makes them feel guilty and ashamed and they start beating themselves up mentally and their inner critical voice starts berating them. Or for some of my clients, the food has stopped giving them any pleasure at all and they just feel bad from the moment they begin eating. So if they've been eating to overcome an unwanted emotion, eating the food actually makes it worse because after they've finished eating, not only do they feel bad about eating the food, but the original negative emotion is still there needing to be addressed in some way. So it's like doubling that negative feeling that they originally had in the first place. Food is not the solution for an emotional problem. And if you've been finding the information I'm sharing with you helpful in any way, or you just like what I'm sharing, I'd love it if you could hit that like button so that it can be shared with more people. Thanks so much for that. So let's look at how you can prevent emotional eating in the first place. Rather than just trying to fix the emotional eating in the moment that it's occurring, which can be very challenging to do, if you're an emotional eater and you want to stop, then I'm going to suggest putting into place in your life some habits that will help you to prevent the emotional eating. Now, why do I have a toothpaste and a toothbrush on the screen? Well, you don't wait until your teeth are yellow and falling out before you decide to brush them. You spend time, for most people, twice a day at least, brushing your teeth, even before they get that furry feeling to maintain healthy, healthy teeth health. And it's a habit. You don't have to think about brushing your teeth. It's just automatic at this point. And the same is true for your emotional health. 
What are some ways that you can regularly, daily, create a habit that is going to look after your emotional health? Now, one suggestion that I use that I actually fought for a long time but now find I can't live without is actually meditation. Spending some quiet time every day just for myself. Relaxing my body, breathing, centering and calming down. And when I've practiced this calm, relaxed state regularly, it then makes it so much easier to be able to access it when I need it in stressful situations. And look, it doesn't have to be long. Often, I'm sitting in the car waiting to pick the kids up from school, and I use those few minutes to do my meditation before the inevitable afternoon rush of activities and getting dinner ready. My next suggestion is yoga or some stretching. Now I've made it a habit to do 15 to 20 minutes of stretching straight after dinner and often my family joins in with me and it just feels so good to stretch out the tight muscles that I've accumulated during the day, releasing that tension that's built up. Now some people like to use exercise to release tension, going for a run or doing a meditative walk. If you've been emotionally eating for any period of time, then don't expect to be able to catch every emotion as they come along. Be kind to yourself. And as you start to have success with using other methods to manage your unwanted emotions, you'll start to do it so that you don't eat as much, so that you can lose the weight. But most importantly, you do it because it makes you feel in control of your eating and so much better about yourself. If you want to learn more about how I help my busy clients to master their weight, then check out my On Demand Masterclass where you'll discover this new mental system that makes permanent weight loss easy and leave dieting and deprivation behind forever. So make sure you click that link to get instant access to that.